Welcome to Jewel School. I'm Sherry Hobb, author and jewelry designer, and today I'm going to show you how to transfer your own images onto jewelry surfaces and charms using a product called ITS. So to start out, you need to have some images. And I've got some pre-printed images right here. And these are printed on ITS paper using a laser copier. So this is toner-based ink, not inkjet. So that's what you want to start with. And I've used a lot of images so I can create a lot of jewelry with this. Or you can add your own personal touch to your jewelry by printing your own family photos for very personalized jewelry. The next thing that you'll need is some jewelry blanks. And I have some right here. These little blanks are just simple shapes that you can transfer your images to. And the secret to having the images work really well is you need to roughen up the surface. So I've got a blank right here that I'm going to work with. And I'm going to sand the surface very well with a 400 or 600 grit sandpaper. So just sand the surface really well. And you want to make sure that you take the shine away from the metal. So you almost want it to have a dull, sort of an aluminum look and not very shiny. That will be helpful in making this uh, transfer hold here. So sand that up really well. And then if you need to, rinse it off in water to make sure you get rid of the dust from the metal that you've sanded. Or you can use a little bit of rubbing alcohol. I have some here. Oops. And just clean off any dust that comes from sanding there to make sure it's nice and clean to apply your image. And then the next step is you need to cut a little picture that you've printed. And I like to make sure that whatever image I'm using has a nice, bright, high contrast image so that it will appear nicely on the jewelry. You're going to remember that the white of the paper is going to go away and only the toner or the ink will remain behind on my jewelry. So that's something to keep in mind here. And then you cut the piece to fit your blank. And I'm going to trim this just a little bit to make sure that I don't have any hanging over the edge, or that's going to make it a little harder to transfer. So cut it to fit your blank. And then remember, your image is going to be face down. So if I have a word on here or any text, you want to print that mirror image, or in other words, backwards, so that it that it appears the right way on your jewelry. So after I've got that piece cut, and that's my cute little granddaughter I have there, I'm going to apply the ITS to my surface. Now the ITS medium is really nice because it doesn't dry out and it uh, lasts for a long time. You can do hundreds of pieces with the one bottle here. And all it takes is a little drop per blank. So I'll open this up and you just put one drop on your metal. And the secret to having this work well is brushing on just one quick thin coat. And you don't want this too thick or too thin, just a nice sort of a decoupage coating on there. And then you put your image on the sanded surface face down. You can't slide it around. You have to be pretty deliberate about putting it on there. Take your fingers and press to make sure there are no bubbles there. If a little ITS seeps out the side, you've done it correctly. You want just a little bit and you know you've put enough on. If you make a mistake, you, the nice thing is you can always sand it off and try it again. And then to transfer the toner into the ITS, I need to bake this or heat set it. So I'm going to put it in a preheated oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit and let it bake for 30 minutes. A nice little secret is that you can also use a rubber stamp heat gun and do this for about a minute as well. So I have that on there and I've baked it. Now after you've baked it, you should see a slight color shift and I'm demonstrating on these bottle caps here what this should look like. Your paper will turn sort of a an off-white color, just a little bit off, and then you know you've baked it correctly. But make sure you don't burn it, because if you do, it'll turn a darker brown and then your image will be yellow. So that's something to keep in mind there. So we bake our piece, 
And then the next step is we're going to soak it in water. We cool it down and we put it in ordinary water and you can let it soak a few minutes or longer if you like, it doesn't matter how long, but let it get, let the paper get fairly soft there. And then to remove the paper, you remove it from the water and your fingernails are your best tool. So you use your fingernails to start from the middle out and I'm rolling this paper back. Now if you've done this correctly and you've had enough ITS on there and you've sanded your metal really well, you won't see any toner coming off, just the paper. So work from the middle out and you may need to re-dip if it gets a little dry, so dip it in your water as you need to and you will see that image start to appear where you've pre-baked it. So I use my fingernails to probably get maybe 80% of the paper off, most of it. Now, if you lose a little along the edge, remember that you want your jewelry to be handmade and have that, that soft look. So I never mind if I have a little bit that may have not uh, been sanded around the edges there. Now, after you've removed most of the paper, you will see that there's a little bit of fogginess from those fibers that are remaining. To remove that, you use a 1200 grit sanding paper. It's a real soft polishing cloth underwater to remove those fibers. So I'm just going to softly sand that in a circular motion, making sure, sometimes I put my thumb into it and I can feel the shape so that I'm not sanding too hard in just one area. So sand away and then dry it off. Now when this is dry, I can examine it and if I see any fogginess, I will know that I have a little bit more work to do to sand the fibers off. But if it's just a little hazy, you're, you're good to go because you can um, shine that up with a little bit of sealer later on. So that piece is ready to make into jewelry. Now for extra protection, you can use a matte or a gloss sealer and these just require one coat and the gloss is shiny and the matte is a very flat look and you bake those on with the same degrees for the same amount of time, so it's 325 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes and that will give you a durable coating that will last for a lot of wear and tear. So I have a finished bracelet here with little images on it. And these have simply been attached to a charm bracelet or a necklace just using pliers and a jump ring. So what you do is you simply use a pair of chain nose pliers and then through the little hole in the top, and if it's, it needs pierced because you've left a little paper in there, you just stick it through. So I use this to attach my pieces onto the chain and then close up the jump ring with your pliers. And this will allow you to make personalized gifts that you can give on birthdays and holidays, and the recipient would be so excited to have their own family photos or the images that you've uh, chosen to give them. Here are a few examples of things you can do with ITS. I have some black, just simply black images applied on metal. You can use the ITS on copper, brass, silver, and just remember that the white of the paper goes away, so whatever that background color um, of the, the, when the white's away, you'll see that metal shining through to provide the background color to your pieces. Thank you for joining us for Jewel School. I hope you will enjoy this technique and go on to make lots of personalized jewelry for yourself and your friends.